Hey everyone, Yiri here and in this video I would like to show you one of the coolest features that I think Supernova can do, especially in terms of the documentation, and that is the ability to render live code inside your documentation sites. Now this is extremely useful because as you know documenting components is actually quite difficult. Usually it consists of combination of having access to the design, which you have with Supernova, and also access to the, to the code which you also have now with Supernova. So I would like to show you how exactly all of this works, what are the limitations and also what all is possible. So what I would like to do on this page is to document this button component. And I would like to use live code that is coming from my code base or in the case of this tutorial video, coming from some other code base like Material UI. So let's go to the documentation of Material UI and see what the button should look like. So now I'm looking at the documentation of Material UI and they clearly spend a lot of time explaining how the buttons and so on should be used. And in many cases you want to do the same. You want to have specific stories, uh, if you will, you want to have specific views on top of your code data that basically render your components in specific situations. And they have it illustrated really well. So for example, we have the basic variants of the buttons, but then also maybe uh, shown in different ways, you know, styled differently and so on. And you have all the code examples here. So you can either copy paste the small example if you know what you're doing, or you can show the entire code, of course. Um, so what I would like to do is to simply just recreate this page and show the same information, ideally using the same framework. So we just have the parity one to one with what they have. So I took some of the descriptions that you see here, like the, the button is used to communicate actions and so on, and made it as a base of our documentation. Now I would like to start with the first example, which is this basic button. So let's do this. Uh, let's just maybe copy paste this text um, and basic button. Now I will turn this into a header. And of course, I'll also copy paste the text. Now the button I can turn into a code or actually you can use a shortcut or you can use the floating bar uh, as well. So let's just uh, change it into the code. And now I would like to add uh, the rendering snippet, the, the piece that renders the live block or the live component. So how would I do this in Supernova? In the documentation, everything is a block. So there is very specific, very special block that allows you to render live code coming from your code bases or from any package that has been published to NPM repository. So what I will do, I will uh, write a render code. And when we do this, you will see that already there is an example that renders the live code. Now this is a live component in this mode, in the editor mode, you cannot really click, click this because it's, uh, it's basically locked uh, from user interaction. So you can do stuff like resizing and so on, but it's live compiled. So I can actually uh, change something about this code and it will immediately change uh, using the live compilation. So if I, uh, for example, change the text of the button to click this button, then you will see that the button and all all its properties, really the layout and so on, do change. And of course, if I save this and I publish the documentation, you will see that we get the live uh, component, uh, including you know, the texts and the, the header that we have created here. So just a one refresh. Uh, to remove what I had there previously. And you can see that we have the basic button. The button has the code highlight. And also this is a real uh, live React button that reacts to what, whatever you are doing. In this case, a, a click handler. Um, now, of course, I can toggle the code and I can copy paste this if I want to copy it to my uh, to my paste box uh, and so on. So this is really good, but I actually wanted to show you how we can get the same information that they have on the side, right? So using the React, uh, the, the material UI React library. So what I will do instead of rendering just this, this plain demo, I'll go to their documentation 
and I will show the full source uh, for this code. I will, I will copy paste it plain and simple and just use the same container uh, to copy paste the text here. Now, of course, we haven't provided a information about uh, what libraries we should be using because by default, we are only importing a React code or a React library and the base React library that is. So what I need to do is to actually include the references, the, the dependencies to material UI, material library that this compiler will use and present us a bit the button information as it should. So what I can do, I will go to a settings and in here you will see the option to use a specific rendering template. So I want to render a React components, I will use this. And then I have a package JSON, which would be well, very familiar to you. Um, and in here, I have some dependencies. And in those dependencies, you can select a specific libraries that should be included in this, um, in this compilation phase. Now, I have already went ahead and on my second computer, my second monitor, um, I've prepared a package JSON that basically defines all the necessary libraries uh, that are needed to render the material UI. So I will just copy paste this uh, new version of the package JSON with different dependencies. And as you can see, I'm adding uh, some material UI material library on also their experimental branch and also uh, some of the emotion libraries. So uh, we can do animations, for example. Um, now I will update this uh, this package JSON, go back to the documentation, go to the button, and now you can see that the button actually renders properly. So going back and seeing how they have done it, indeed we have uh, rendered the same thing as they, they do have it. Uh, and of course they have this nice ripple effect and everything, so let's try whether this works uh, as expected. I will republish the documentation. I'll go back to our site, refresh, and now you will see that we are rendering the material UI code inside our documentation. And of course, I can just take the code and if I have the appropriate dependencies in my library, I will be able to do this, um, to, do, to copy paste and use this code immediately uh, wherever I need it. Now, of course, you are not limited to just one uh, snippet of code. And as you can see on this side, there is quite a lot of them. So we will certainly not replicate all of them in, in the case of this video. But I can show you that you can truly uh, render some other examples. So let's maybe uh, take the second one, um, add a new header. Maybe this time just uh, by writing the header. Uh, and name it text buttons. And then again, I can just write render, add the snippet of the code here, and it will re-render uh, and it will show you the button in a different variant that uh, what is there before. Of course, I can publish. And as you will see on the documentation side, I will now have uh, the capability to, to see both of those at the same time. So again, refreshing, you'll see that it compiles the code. And now I have the basic button, but also the text variants. I can see the code for both of them. One last thing that I would like to show you is how you can customize those code blocks, because in many cases, you just need some additional customization and we provide you with few options, with additional options possible throughout our templating engine, which I uh, spend some time explaining in the next video. Now, uh, in terms of how you can customize those blocks, let's just create another one. Um, and let's maybe just duplicate the code that we have here. So let's just copy paste that it will create two of the same blocks. And now what you can do with this blog is, for example, to resize it for many components, you know, that this will probably be enough. But if you need more time, more space, you actually can just uh, drag the window and resize it. And of course, if you would uh, find some example, which in, which needs more space, this seems appropriate. So let's just uh, take all of this code and render it actually instead of the duplicate. So now you see that we actually really need a lot more space. So the resizing is really useful. 
Uh, at the same time, in many cases, you actually need a different background because the checkered background would not work for any, all the components. If you have some white ones or if you have some white icons, for example, or if you have dark white backgrounds, uh, then this is really important to be able to customize as well. So you can just go to this block uh, and it has a background color. If you enable this, you basically override the checkered background. And I could potentially uh, do something like this, which would just render it on a dark background. Additionally, I can align the components, which is useful in many cases, especially if you are rendering large components like tabs and so on. Um, so then it will disable the spacing that we are adding here and it will just make it full screen aligned to the left. So we can do this, but for those components, it just doesn't make too much sense. So let's get back. And lastly, what you can also do is to just hide this code view. Now, this is sometimes also very useful if you just want to highlight some of the components, but you don't really want to bother users in understanding what the code does. So I can disable this code view. And uh, while in the editor, it will still show up because you actually need to have a way how to edit this code, right? If we publish the documentation, it will no longer be accessible to the, to the users. So it will only show the view configured as we have done it. So going back to the documentation for the last time, you can see that we now have the text button uh, header with the block that we have created, but also the customize a customized code block that only renders the component, but actually doesn't give you the option uh, to show the code. It still shows the live component. Of course, everything is interactive. Uh, if it's disabled, uh, like in this case, you can actually see that it's not possible to do anything with it. So this functionality works as well. So this is what I wanted to show you. I hope that you liked our live components and I will see you in the next video.